six of our 22-day adventure in Kruger Park. It's nice and early, and we're ready to explore. Today, we're heading southwest towards Pretoria Scott, and I'm going to share with you a few of my favourite stop-off points before visiting Pretoria Scott Rest Camp for lunch in a very familiar restaurant. And, with a bit of luck, we'll enjoy plenty of wildlife sightings along the way. It's about 50 kilometres from Skakuza to Potoroskop, down the Nappy Road. But with stop-off and sightings, it can take several hours to reach your destination. Our first stop-off will be one of our favourite waterholes, about 10 kilometres from Skakuza. And as we turn into Delaport Waterhole, it's always a bit of a lottery. This is a location where we've seen many great sightings over the years. But today, it's pretty quiet. Just a lone warthog grazing peacefully, despite being suspicious of our intrusion. So we leave the waterhole and head towards our next planned stop-off area, Transport Dam. A large span of water which attracts large numbers of wildlife, big and small, but is famous for one of the most spectacular big cat action sightings ever recorded in Kruger Park. More about that later. And it's not long before we come across a troop of baboons having a grooming session on the road. Grooming is a vital part of the baboon's social bonding. Whilst conveniently ridding the animals of parasites, there are also major benefits such as stress relief, reducing tension, strengthening bonds and confirming the troop hierarchy, as it's usually the subordinates that groom the superiors. Another animal that depends on family bonding is, of course, the elephant. More often found feeding in groups, it's interesting to see this lone bull breakfasting roadside. He was oblivious to traffic, he was concentrating on finding the juiciest branches, and it was a privilege just to sit and watch. He has a busy day ahead, as it will take him 16 to 18 hours to eat up to the 375 pounds of leaves, twigs and branches needed to satisfy his enormous appetite. At this point, he seemed to be suggesting we take our leave. Next stop, Transport Dam. This location had given us many great sightings over the years, so our expectations are high. Down a very bumpy track, almost anything could be waiting for us. This is where possibly the most epic wildlife footage ever was captured by a tourist in 2004. Eight minutes of jaw-dropping action, as a pride of lions grab a water buffalo calf, then accidentally push the calf into the water, where two crocodiles grab the calf by the legs, thus starting a frantic tug of war, which ends when the crocodiles unexpectedly release the calf, which are then dragged up to dry land, only to have the buffalo herd return to bravely challenge the pride, who amazingly give up the calf, which runs away barely injured. Check out Battle at Kruger on YouTube. It's amazing. Now, what's not amazing? is the entire lack of any wildlife at the dam this morning. You know, sometimes it's just that way. This is no Disney holiday with guarantees of entertainment. You need perseverance and a little luck. So it's back on the road to our next planned stop, Nappy Boulders. Down another dirt track, the boulders are potentially a good spot to view cats who enjoy basking in an elevated position from the top of the rocks. But, not today, or uh, maybe next time, but do visit, they may be luckier than we were. Yes, giraffe, time to sit back, chill out and enjoy. Well, 
Well, I stopped before lunch. And I hope you forgive the pronunciation if I'm wrong. Shitlav Dam. Down the usual rough track, and suddenly a body of water appears. Now, this is a great place for a picnic or an afternoon snooze, as it's a little quieter than other locations, and there's usually something to see. And today we start with the heron hunting from the rocks. No look. So there's a check around the shoreline. Sadly, there's few pickings there as well. But there is a lazy audience of a lone hippo watching on. shoreline a waxwing feeding on grass seeds. Very pretty. Tommy's rumbling. We move on to Pretorioscop camp for lunch. Pretorioscop is the oldest rest camp in Kruger and is historically home to a large herd of white rhino. Surrounded by loop roads and trails, it's a little gem well worth a stay. There's 52 air-conditioned bungalows and 54 tent and caravan spaces. There's a nice central park with picnic tables and a play area for children. And it's just a short walk for food and shopping. There's also a shop and two restaurants, one of which we haven't seen for years in our part of the UK, Wimpy. And that's where we'll be eating today. We were surprised to see the menu had not really changed in the many years since we dined there last. And I ordered an old favourite. Delicious. There's good toilet facilities for visitors. And probably the neatest, most well-stocked shop in the Kruger. Every time we visit, the shelves are immaculately stacked. And the store is super clean and tidy, with a very good selection of food. And wine. Quick check of the sightings board, and off we go again. The area is said to be good for elephant viewing, but today we see just a lone animal. The story of our day so far. Always at hand, these impala grazing were a welcome sight on a disappointing day so far. transport dam another try as we make good progress back to Skakuza. This afternoon a beautiful herd of waterbuck were a welcome sight. They really are wonderful animals. The crocodile pulls out the water to sunbathe on the rocks. All under the gaze of this magnificent fish eagle. Back out on the road, this tawny eagle's spotted roadkill. Scares himself silly, then decides to give up and fly off into the bush. We do a last check in at Delaporte Waterhole. Quite often a good spot in late afternoon. Another lone animal. This time, a hyena. Back on the road again. Again, disappointed, we decide to check out Lake Panic Hyde. With a safety fence to guide you in, it's still advised to have a good look around before you leave your car. It's about 50 yards down to the hide, which can be very popular, so I recommend you plan your trip carefully and avoid the busy times if possible. Oh, 
There's good viewing positions looking over the water, and if the water levels are good, many birds and animals visit each day. Master fishermen, these squacko herons are one of the fastest in the business. These turtles are regulars and often to be seen basking on these fallen trees pretty much every year we visit. This noisy weaver bird colony is unmissable. You hear them long before you see them. Nest building is in full production. And these little birds are tearing up the grass leaves all around to weave the most intricate of nests. Our first ever sighting of a crowned eagle climbing a tree. A black crake walking on the mud. And a beautiful Malachite kingfisher studying the water. Time to return to Skakusa. But before we arrive, a surprise sighting. It's unusual for us to see mongoose on the road, and they usually scamper into undergrowth well before you get the camera up. Well, this little fellow decided to check us out, as curious about us as we were about him. to camp. And despite the disappointing day, we realised that exceptional sightings are not common in any wildlife environment. But it does mean that we didn't enjoy the day. We saw a good selection of wildlife, had a lovely day-long exploration, and had a meal last enjoyed over 40 years ago. And tomorrow, well, who knows? See you next time on the Better Photography and Travel Channel.